This is Tusculum College Football, and this is The Jerry Odom Show. The Jerry Odom Show is brought to you in part by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1947. Sodexo, proud food supplier of Tusculum College. By Creekside Markets, stop in and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza today. By Premier Transportation, the official bus provider for Tusculum College Athletics. And brought to you in part by Comcast. The Jerry Odom Show begins now. The Tusculum Pioneers and the Newberry Wolves meet for the 19th time on the gridiron. Hello everyone, I'm Brian Staten, back for the Jerry Odom Show to be joined by Pioneer coach Jerry Odom as well. Well, it is a Tusculum football team in search of their first win of the season. They take on a Newberry team that has done quite well. Won two consecutive games after their opening season loss to Florida Tech. But even in that game, Newberry gained national recognition as Markel Castle makes just an amazing one-handed grab. Caught two touchdowns in that contest, but his one-handed grab made Sports Center's top ten as the number two play from the day in college football. They're also gaining at national recognition because of their quarterback, and I'll talk a little bit more about him in a moment. But first, let's talk a little bit about this whole series, Tusculum and Newberry. Back in the day for Newberry and Coach Mike Taylor, who was the longtime coach, always had some great talent, just weren't able to get a whole bunch of wins. One of the most tenured coaches in Newberry, still had just over 40 wins for his career. Coach Frankie DeBus comes in for Tusculum College and kind of changes the culture, and all of a sudden Tusculum goes from losing to Newberry to defeating Newberry early in this great rivalry, but doing so by recruiting the state of South Carolina and getting a lot of those great athletes to come to Tusculum College. Enter Zach Willis. He's an old Furman guy. We love Zach Willis. We love Zach Willis so much. We even had a segment about Zach Willis in some of our pregame shows. He was a fiery competitor. He was a guy that played football on the Furman University team with the aforementioned Frankie DeBusk. Well, he changed the culture of Newberry. What he did do is he brought in that fiery com competitor attitude, and they changed everything. Number one, shutting off the doors to Tusculum College and recruiting the state of South Carolina. They started winning South Carolina. He brought in a great defensive coordinator, and in doing so, in Todd Knight, changed the culture of the Newberry Wolves program, of course, back then known as the Newberry Indians. Josh Stepp and Tymir Zimmerman made things and life tough on everybody in the South Atlantic Conference, and Todd Knight was part of that with his great defensive schemes. It was always Zach's offensive schemes. Well, Zach left, and they decided to bring in Todd Knight. Many of us in the South Atlantic Conference thought, well, he probably won't stick around, but he's he loved Newberry so much he has stayed, and that has been bad for everybody else in the league because he has one of the best defenses year in and year out at Newberry. Then insert his ability to recruit wonderful quarterbacks. And he has done so so well over the last few years that usually the backup leaves to go take some other type of job. And so therefore, the coach, the quarterback carousel continues even in Division II, South Atlantic Conference, but primarily at Newberry. Raleigh Yeldale, when he entered four years ago, was to be the guy in the South Atlantic Conference. And there is no question he is the guy so far this year in this very young season. Comes in with already over 1,100 yards of total offense into the game, and it accounted for 10 touchdowns. These are top 10 numbers in the nation already, and it's one of the top in the South Atlantic Conference. He also enters as the two-time reigning South Atlantic Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Now, he had a great day against Tusculum. We're not going to belittle the numbers. 30 of 39 in the game, and an offense that racked up 502 total yards. Now, he did not earn South Atlantic Conference Offensive Player of the Week honors this week, but he had a tremendous game. But he had some help. He had some wide receivers that made some tremendous catches. So, insert Jerry Odom this year for the Pioneers, trying to change a culture defensively with Tusculum. I just gave you some of the numbers about what they gave up, and you'll see as we progress in this show how Newberry was able to rack up the amount of numbers that they were able to get. A lot of it in the air, and that was a concern because Tusculum came in as the number one ranked pass defense in the South Atlantic Conference against the number two pass offense in the South Atlantic Conference, the Newberry Wolves. 
It was a good defense, number two overall, against a great offense, number two overall in the league. It was Tusculum. It was Newberry. Newberry and Tusculum meeting for the 19th time. The Wolves have won five of the last six games, and the only game they lost was here at Pioneer Field. Rainstorm, second half, leading 14-3. to three. All of a sudden, they go into a shell, and they decide to start running it. Turn it over. Don't convert on fourth down. Miss field goals. Bad punts. And Tusculum rallies for a 16-14 win in the rain, in the mud, that destroyed Pioneer Field. Pioneer Field has since been rebuilt thanks to facilities management. David and Chad and Buster, those guys have worked their tails off to give us a nice field. We've got a 40-yard logo, for crying out loud, on our field now, and it looks awesome. However, in the game, Newberry came out and showed why they are one of the best offenses in the country. The Newberry Wolves win, have now won six of their last seven against the Tusculum Pioneers as they win 37 to 10. A lot of what we did looked better, and when Coach Ogue joins us, we'll talk about looking better. That's when the Jerry Odom Show continues right after this. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. We welcome you back into the Jerry Odom Show. The Pioneers fall to the Newberry Wolves this past Saturday. We're joined by Pioneer coach Jerry Odom, who talked about Raleigh Yeldell being the real deal. Raleigh comes in as the two-time conference offensive reigning player of the week as he comes to take on the team. And, you know, he's a good passer, but, man, he had some good help. Those guys made some very difficult catches this he's week. He's got three older receivers, I think two seniors and a junior, that are outstanding. They didn't drop anything, um, even with good coverage, when we did cover them. We didn't cover them very well, folks. But but when we did, they didn't drop anything. Yeah. And, and he was very accurate. And he – it was – my worst nightmare a little bit kind of come true. I knew that he was going to be accurate. We tried some different pressures getting home on him, but he's so good getting the ball out of his hands because he understands that offense as a senior quarterback. He's been in it for four years. He gets it. And uh, I think, you know, the people in this league, as long as he stays healthy, are going to see how good he is as, as, as this thing progresses. You know, you talked a lot, too, about how he doesn't take sacks, but he – has good protection, but I believe it's also a little bit the system. You know, he gets rid of the ball in a oh, hurry. It was tough to put pressure on him. Absolutely. I mean, he, he knows where his hots are. He knows where his bubble reads are. Um, they do a lot of RPO stuff. Um, so And with his feet, it makes you be a little – like you can't play two-man uh, because if you're playing two-man, everybody's got a guy. That means the front four have to contain him. You can't – you know, you, yeah. it's hard to contain that guy. And uh, so it took that out of us. It's harder, a little bit harder to play true man free uh, unless you're blitzing. Um, so, you know, we got down there. We threw a lot of different coverages at them. They just happened to handle us. You know, it was a pioneer offense that a little bit of a new look. But Malcolm Pendergrass back there kind of let him, with a package. Uh, we yeah. brought in Skradsky some, and, and Luke comes in. And, you know, got into a little bit of a rhythm still. Making those baby steps, it looked as if there was some progression on this offense. I, I felt there was a little progression. Uh, you know, they're getting better at who they're blocking. Uh, you know, I feel good about the, you know, some of the things we did. We just got to be more consistent doing them. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. Um, Newberry is athletic up front. Right. They stunt a lot. They more slant than twist. They slant a lot. They did a good job on their slants. They timed up some key ones on third downs uh, that probably hurt us. You know, it's third and three, third and two. We don't get the first down running an outside zone or an inside zone. and. That's something that we've got to get better at, obviously. But, uh, you know, give them all the credit. I think they do a great job of coaching them there. I played them last year, and I told, you know, our players after last year, if Yadel doesn't get hurt, that's a barn burner game, you mm -hmm. know. And, and uh, so I, I have a lot of respect for Todd and the job that they do. And what they have done is taken a one-game lead in the series. It was the 19th meeting between Tusculum and Newberry, and the Newberry Wolves get the victory. If you missed it, let's take a look at it. We take a look at your first-half highlights Tusculum versus Newberry for the Pioneers. They get four of the next five here at home. And as we pick up the action, the Pioneers have punted it away to Newberry. And the uh, Wolves, after a good punt return, set up shop deep in Pioneer territory after a first down play to Darius Clark. Now it's second down to nine. 
And uh, Raleigh Yeldale worked a lot out of this um, pistol and did a lot of this right around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, well, he just checked to a bubble screen because he thought we were, but we peeled it, did a nice job, uh, gap exchange and that. Got it down to fourth and one, you know, had a chance to, you know, get a stop there. Yep. You know, after get a long punt return. Again, can't put our defense in tough situations. Come out in a package here. It's a, a, a 12 personnel package, a, a really an 0-2. There's no running back in there. So Malcolm becomes a running back, and all we're doing is trying to run a little bit outside zone concept stuff and inside zone and then bringing it back and, and try to move the ball that way. Uh, getting numbers, you know, mm -hmm. kind of some single wing theories, and we're going to throw more out of that package as we go. Uh, you know, we just got to keep, you know, the little things. Right here, we should have thrown the bubble. If we throw the bubble right there, that's our outlet. We didn't get it, so we come back with Malcolm. He really was supposed to cut, throw the, he's throw the, supposed to count the numbers and throw the bubble. Didn't throw the bubble right there, probably should have. Uh, you know, but we're moving a little bit. We got the the post right there wide open, we can't throw it this deep. This is a stick it on him throw on the post, and we have to just stick it on him. And he's wide open between the the, uh, the hashes there, and we throw it to the opposite hash and, and puts us in a little bit of a bind. So they end up getting a score, their kickoff, and one of our young freshmen uh, who, who we put in there because of an injury catches the ball and goes out of bounds at the three. I mean, we were having some freshman issues at quarterback. And, you know, DB was some dis difficulties, and, and we're just a young football team. Try to run the inside zone coming out and get about three yards, uh, you know, trying to get off the, line of, you know, off the line of scrimmage, come back again, kind of push it through, but – then, you know, on third down, we put Malcolm in. We try to run the, the punch play. We don't get it. Now we got a punt. So because they held us up on this punt return, we put an extra gunner in, which was, was the thing we're going to rugby punt. But then we shanked the rugby punt. Uh, I think it was all of, I don't know, about three and a half, four yard punt. So they get the ball at the 23 yard line. First play, they go a sluggo route, which is something that we had talked about. Uh, but you can't throw it much better right. than that. That's not terrible coverage right there. Uh, and they threw it on that back shoulder, and the kid's a big, tall guy, and he just was able to go up and get it over. So. Look, Yeldell had good numbers, 30 of 39, but he was 19 of 22 in the first half. He just kind of really took advantage. The Pioneers are battling down 20 to nothing, and then Isaac Robinson in the ground game starts to go 15 yards first play, 13 yards here on this play. Yeah, and we're starting to get this. This is just two different zone plays. I thought we passed off their slants pretty good. Um, there's times I felt like there was even, even more holes there. That first one that Isaac hit, if he wouldn't have stuttered, he might have gone the distance, mm -hmm. you know, or had a chance to re-break one. We tried a, a, a pin and pull deal right here, and we didn't get a good block on the pin, so we put Malcolm back in, and this time, you know, we tried to run the outside zone where we were going to. They were stunning into it, so we kept him in there, and I believe we got a penalty there. Uh, so yep. we throw the bubble screen out here. We just got to hit this. We got to go vertical. We can't kind of – play around with it because that we still got six yards but now it puts us into a third and ten they run a little fire zone blitz we pick it up great catch right here uh, yeah chavis catches yeah, the chavis back end of the ball catches the back end of the ball makes somebody miss uh right here and then you know runs on down to about the two three yard line heck of a play by him on a high throw uh, you know chavis is a guy that's got to get bigger and stronger but he's got that speed uh, he's got to be more consistent, but we do like what he can do. So then we come in on first down. They're in a fair defense. We down, down, kick on a, on a little one-back power, and we're able to punch it in here for the touchdown to get us back to 27. There was a, a flag on the play. It was for offsides for Newberry. Williams on the day, three catches, 68 yards. So Isaac Robinson, 10 carries, 50 yards, and the touchdown. The Pioneers do make it 20-7, to seven, and just before the – End of the uh, first half, the Pioneers get the ball. And again, we're going to talk a lot about making some positive strides, only to have uh, something negative uh, happen to the team on first and 10 with the Pioneers down right now 23-7. to Lancaster looking deep for Barnes, just a bit underthrown, couldn't come back to it. But Robinson back-to-back -back plays on this series. Yeah, it came back, they tried a little twist. We had a draw on, did a nice job selling the draw, good well blocked by the offensive line. So we get down to you know, I'm trying to get down at least in the field goal range right here. And then right here we got a wheel route, and we probably should have thrown it right now. And uh, we kind of sat back, had a little bit of a bad throw. Great catch by Isaac getting his foot in. But if we just stuck him with it, he might have been walking into the end zone. 
uh, but we do get down uh, to the 25 yard line and right here uh, their left three technique which is the, the to your left beats our guard inside just should you know right there I don't know that Luke could have done much. Right. That, he, we just got beat right there at the, at the line of scrimmage. I mean, they beat us on an inside move. Look like Caleb LaFleur set a little bit too far outside. You know, we talk a lot about setting up good plays, but good teams will respond with good plays. I think what you saw there is Newberry able to respond defensively after yeah. giving up a couple of big plays. Yeah, and, and that's part of it. You know, we, we have to – what we didn't do this, this week against Newberry to me is just get off the field on third down. I mean, they were 12 of 16 or something on third down, and seven of those were third and nine or more. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. That can't right. happen. You get them third or nine or more, you're getting off the field. That's a game changer in the game. That's our money down. That's where we make our money. So that's something that we're going to go back to work on again this week and give him credit. But a lot of it was we – busted some on defense and didn't cover the guys that we were supposed to cover and we weren't near as disciplined as we need to be in that. And as we have been being, I think we pressed a little bit. Getting right. down, I feel like we started pressing. I said, guys, play in the second half. I wrote on the board, will you fight? Right on the halftime, you know. And I said, play like there's no scoreboard. That's all I wanted to see in the second half to see if we come out and have a little fight to us because I felt like the last couple of weeks we struggled getting going coming out in the third quarter. You'll see that fight when we come back after this. We're at halftime, Tusculum and Newberry come back with the Jerry Odom Show right after this. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. <laughs> Welcome back into the Jerry Odom Show, the Tusculum Pioneers and the Newberry Wolves for the 19th time. We're at the half. Newberry has a 23-7 lead and will have the ball to start the second half or at least receive that second half kickoff. Joined by Pioneer Coach Jerry Odom. You mentioned it before we went to the break. You just went into the locker room and made it real simple. Will you fight? And I think you learned a lot about your team here in the second half. Well, yeah, some for sure. We, I, I, don't, I think we did fight, but I don't think we fought very smart. You know, <laughs> we, you know we were probably like the uh, revolutionary war fighters where they just walked into everything. Everything instead of you know be, yeah. maybe grill a figure warfare or figure it out, but uh, they did fight. I do, I do. I told them I was proud of proud of them for that because I felt like they fought till there were zeros on the clock. We just have to execute better. Um, we caused three turnovers coming out. Uh, we got three points out of it. You know that could have turned the game around. You score two touchdowns out of that, yeah. and now all of a sudden we're right back in it, and uh, we just. We didn't do it. A lot of difference in the first half to the second half. They didn't even force a punt. They did get a, a fourth down stop, but they now started forcing some turnovers here in this second half. We'll take a look at your second half highlights as we pick it up. Newberry with the football again, receiving the second half kickoff on the drive. Cole Watson, uh, third down to five. These are some of the things that you were talking about. He picks up a 19 yard first, 19 yards on third down and five. Well, and we talked all week about slants being slants and seams being their favorite, you know, thing that they love to do. And and uh, then we don't we don't set you know we don't play inside and set the edge. Right here, they're trying to run some jet sweep concept stuff. We're screwed up so bad. The safety is supposed to go to go with the guy in motion. Where Keith tries to go with him initially, comes back to his guy, ends up punching the ball out, and somehow God smiled upon us right there because we needed a uh, we needed a break to get us back into this thing, and uh, we were able to punch that out and, and create that turn. Well, Keith with ten tackles on the day, three of them for loss, including a forced fumble and a breakup on the day. The offensive. Uh, team would, would stall. Ben Skrasky would come in for a quick kick, and then the Pioneers uh, pinning Newberry deep. Raleigh Yildale sacked for the only time of the day by Brent Williams. Yeah, this 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 drive here is why I'm bald, uh, basically, because uh, this was three third and twelves. I believe. Right, right exactly. Right. You don't want to see this. Uh, one. No, but but like we're in cover two right here. This should be this should be a pick right here. I think this is the one right here comes back, he throws it deep. We're in cover two. We're supposed to be deep as the deepest on that side. If we are, it's a it's an easy pick. So we give up that third, but we keep battling. All right, so they come out, they try to run the football. You know, first, second down, don't do a whole lot. 
got them third and you know third and ten. They we showed blitz, checked out of it to cover two. Uh, Jay Boyd, young freshman, uh, plays it perfectly. Great jump on the ball. He's got great ball skills. Returns it all the way back down, you know, to about the 20, 25 yard line in in there somewhere. And uh, you know, great play. And right now, I'm thinking, okay, if we get a score. Might be right back in this thing. All right, second consecutive drive, second consecutive turnover. We were rooting for Jay to score. Um, so was I. 33-yard return. Uh, Lancaster comes out uh, on the offense, and yeah. again, looking for Connor Johnson. Right there, Connor was open early. Uh, we were supposed to bring a crossing route, and the guy kind of fell down, but he's got to stick Connor earlier on that. That's, that's an earlier throw, but we do throw the bubble, uh, miss our block, but still are able to get six or seven yards out of it right here. Come back out, uh, it's third and three. Try to run the outside zone, and our guard just goes the wrong way. There's no other way to say it. He, he set the wrong way, um, just had a mental bust, and that's kind of the frustrating part for this year, and we were, we were able to kick field goal. We missed the first one. False start gave a second chance. Tommy hit the 41-yarder. The Pioneers make it 23-10, to 10, feeling really good about themselves. And again, the third series for Newberry of the second half, and yet Jalen Kesterson forcing another fumble for Jatu Booker. Yep, uh, Jatu, Jalen does a good job off the backside, hustles over there. Uh, we don't play that play extremely well, as well as I would like it, the way I wanted to play it, but it's a great job, and now we're – Again, you know, right back in it, great field position, 45-yard line, 44-yard line, have a chance to, to, to do something and, and go from there. And Newberry's defense really come out. They kind of sort of sensed, I think, that they were in some trouble with a little jet sweep. Um, well, once well, again, Williams. this was a late hit. Yeah. They hit him like three yards out of bounds. I turned this one in. <laughs> uh, but uh, because that, that's on their 15 yards. Where, you know, puts us in a different thing. Like right here. Inside zone, they kind of pinched and brought a blitz. He's just got to have a few more jets, and we were going to run this into the boundary, and we had Connor Johnson, a freshman, uh, just missed his block on the down block. They get penetration on the, on the missed block, and our pin and pull gets blown up. Pioneers would have to punt it away. Newberry would eventually score to make it 30 to 10, and then again at 37 to 10. This is the Pioneers' drive. Luke Lancaster gets going here on this drive, looking for Jordan Barnes and Neil Lee back to back. Yeah, we're just running the outside zone, but we're we're tagging it with a bubble just to see where that kind of how they're lined up and everything right here, and uh, able to throw in a nice catch by Neil on a little quick vertical seam, you know, hit route uh, and a hitch. Hits the hitch, uh, motion to a three by one or two from a three by one to a two by two, get a, get a penalty. I don't know really what they called right there. And then again, we try to run the pin and pull scheme, don't get it. So we come back, run zone read with Malcolm. He should have stayed. If he stays inside right there, he might, you know, get another 15 yards. We worked all week on him staying inside, and then we try to run the draw. They twisted into it, obviously. Might as well go for it on fourth mm -hmm. down at this time, you know, time of points. We go for it on fourth down, but they jump off sides. Give us another opportunity right here. Uh, run the jet sweep, and we just don't block the end. I mean, I, I cannot tell you why. Uh, had a couple mental busts there, and uh, then we throw it. Got a curl flat. That was open all day to the weak side. Finally got a pretty solid throw right there to, I believe, Chavis. Travis. And makes a good catch. We're down to 15. Uh, throw the check down uh, is what we were thinking right here. You know, right right here because they didn't have anybody for the check down. We got to be able to throw that and not panic. Come back, throw a bubble screen because we wanted to get it to, to fourth and manageable, knowing mm -hmm. you know third or fourth and manageable, knowing that we're going to do four down territory here because we were still trying to get a score. Uh, they get a little bit of pressure right here, but this got to be a catch. That's a good throw. It can't be dropped. Jordan's got to catch that football. Come back. Not really sure why we threw this, uh, but we were about, I don't know, a foot short, and we didn't get in. And uh, that's kind of all she wrote. You know, a lot of this for the uh, Pioneers, youngsters, yes, but then you've got somebody like a Nick England who hasn't been out there. and It doesn't make a huge difference, but I think in the impact on your offense, it makes it, a big difference. It makes a big difference. Nick's, Nick, Nick's a very dynamic player. Uh, getting Chavis in the mix will help. 
but you know if we get Nick back this week, that'll be that'll be a big boon to our offense and what we're trying to do. I don't know whether he'll be back or not. He's dealing with a little quad pull. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still early in the week, so you know we just got to kind of see how how it develops as we go. But I think uh, you know with the amount of freshmen that we are playing, that every little bit helps right now. Right. Every little bit helps. We got to find a way to get a W, and then we'll kind of go from there. Look, you're a defensive guy. You, you did give up 37 points. That's how you're going to look at it. I look at a Newberry team that obviously is loaded with some veterans. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got some guys, some playmakers that can do things. You've got guys that can force turnovers and get some things made and, and create some opportunities yeah. when you're in that game. Um, you have to feel as if you still took some steps towards being a better defense. I, 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 I guess, you know, I mean, you know, we've, I felt like it was what was frustrating for me is that we went over everything they did. And I just felt like our eyes, you know, we talk about training our eyes a lot because you play with your, you play football with your eyes, folks. You know, you look at the right thing, whether, you know, whether you're playing quarters or cover two or quarter, quarter, half or man free or two man or whatever you're doing, especially in the back end and a linebacker. Train your eyes, look at the right things, will take you to the play. And we did that awful this week. That's my, that, that's my biggest boon. Not how hard they played, but how hard they trained their eyes, and they just didn't do those things. And when you go back and look at the film, they see it too. They're like, man, if I'd have just done this or I'd just done this. Yeah. But that's where we can't panic. We need good things to happen. Um, I felt like we panicked. We got down 14 nothing like that before we started playing. So I got to figure out, I told them after the game, I got to figure out what button to push right. to get us to come out playing faster, you know, find a way to play faster. We tried you know, fake kicks and onside kicks and all kind of stuff, and we'll continue to do that but to try to help ourselves if we can. But uh, it's just one of those things where eventually it's going to come, and when it does, we get over that hump, then I think it's going to be a, a much easier thing to see that they can get it, actually get it done. His Pioneers fall to the Newberry Wolves this past Saturday. Another team he's been affiliated with for his career also fell Saturday. We won't talk about that a whole lot. Oh, I expected that. (laughs) I didn't expect the downfall, but I think I picked Tennessee to win, believe it or not. Listen, they they started fast, but they didn't end fast. No. That's that's for sure. Tennessee definitely did. They they played outstanding. I I think you got to give Butch Jones and those guys all the credit. I mean, that's what guys have to see that. I told my team, I said, you guys can laugh. Uh, because I'm a Florida guy or whatever, but I said that's why you play two halves of the game, folks. Right. You know that's exactly why. And I think Florida forgot to come back out, and Tennessee whooped them, and that's that's you know that's the end of that 12 year run. And uh, you know hopefully uh, Florida can start a new one next year. That's, <laughs> that's what he's saying now. <laughs> now he's going to start a run Saturday. We'll talk oh, about God, the Brevard Tornadoes when we return right after this. This is the Jerry Odom Show. Back in a moment. Premier Transportation. From the moment you step onto any of the motor coaches, it's clear. They pay attention to details. They make sure you have the the top-of-the-line amenities, the industry's most innovative technology, and the most advanced safety features to ensure every mile of your journey is a smooth one from coast to coast. The Premier Fleet. Escape the ordinary. The journey is half the fun. Premier Transportation. The official bus provider for Tusculum College Athletics. Welcome back into the Jerry Odom Show. The Tusculum Pioneers fall to the Newberry Wolves by a final score of 37 to 10. We're going to talk about some of the individuals on the day that kind of had some big numbers. And as we take a look at those guys, if we start on defense with Keith Brown. Ten tackles on the day, three for loss. He had a forced fumble. Again, he did that early in that second half. Brandon Bartlett finished with nine tackles. Quadra Allen posted seven tackles including five solo stops as well. Offensively, weren't bad. 234 yards of offense, 140 of that came from Luke Lancaster in the air. He went 11 of 23, and Isaac Robinson had 50, 50 yards on 10 carries and his first touchdown of the season. So some of the individuals are starting to get some of their numbers and against a very good Newberry team, and again, without Nick England. But look at what Chavis Williams was able to do. Three catches for 68 yards and an electrifying 50-yard catch as well, which leads us to our call of the game, or should I say calls 
We went with an offensive play and a defensive play this week. On offense, it was that 50-yard catch from Chavis Williams, and on defense, it was the young freshman, Jay Boyd, making an impact in the second half. It is Lancaster to pass, and he's looking across the middle, has a man, it's Williams complete at the 30, breaks a tackle at the 25, at the 20 to the 15, breaks another tackle to the five, takes it down to the two. First and 10. Yeldale to pass, this one is picked off by Jay Boyd at the 40. Boyd at the 35, Boyd 30, 25, and takes it to the 22. Jay Boyd for the Pioneers. It's time now to take a look inside the numbers. Tushkillum Falls to Newberry, the big number was 37 to 10. But Newberry already came into the game at number three in the nation in first downs gained. If you looked at just one number and you looked at it statistically, you would look at two. First downs, time of possession. Newberry did both very well. And on this day, the same, the same is true. 29 first downs for Newberry, just 14 for Tusculum. And they did a lot of that, converting on third downs. Nine of 12 for Newberry, and of the nine, five of them were of seven yards or more. On the day, they rushed for 172 yards, Tusculum for 87. They threw for 330, Tusculum 147. The quarterbacks for Newberry, Raleigh Yeldell, 30 of 39 with the with an interception for Tusculum's Luke Lancaster, Ben Skratsky, and Malcolm Pendergrass, 13 of 26. No picks, no turnovers for the Pioneers. That was the big story there. Total offense, 76 plays, 502 yards for Newberry, 61 plays, 234 yards for the Tusculum Pioneers on the day. Time of possession, Newberry 32-04, Tusculum 27-56. Third downs mentioned it, 9 of 12 for Newberry, just 3 of 15 for the Pioneers, and in the red zone, Newberry was five of six, the Pioneers were two of three. When we come back, Coach Odom talks about how we get a win against Brevard. That's when we continue right after this with more of the Jerry Odom Show. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve, so while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. We welcome you back into the Jerry Odom Show. The Tusculum Pioneers get set to take on the Brevard Tornadoes this coming Saturday. Paul Hamilton's been around East Tennessee for a long time uh, at the East, East Tennessee State University, then went on to back to Air Force, went to Elon, been at uh, Brevard, and now for the last few years he's incorporated a new style, but he didn't have the same style when he started, but he loves this option attack, and we don't yep. see it a whole lot. And yep. I think that's what made Carson Newman so great in this league sure. is because they were the only team doing it why is alignment assignment football so difficult to defend? Well, it's just with the option attack, they're reading you. They're, you know, so if you do the wrong thing, they know exactly what they're doing. My dad coached 42 years, and, and probably third, 25 to 30 of it was as an option guy. So I'm, I'm pretty well versed in why and how. Um, they do a great job running the midline, the inside veer. They don't run a lot of outside veer, but they'll run some, you know, some trap out and I hadn't seen a lot of trap but some counter option mm -hmm. and things like that um, but uh, you know he does a great job of coaching it we have, it makes your guys be fundamentally sound they have to play their assignment we will practice this week probably without a ball mm -hmm. there's no reason to use one um, unless you know we're in a pass situation which they do a good job on the wheel routes and the bootlegs and things like that he's got it all in um, we, what we have to do is, is be fundamentally sound on every single thing we do and we've got to tackle. That, yep. it, it, I think the option attack, two things, it, it lets a smaller lineman be able to do things because they cut so much and everything yep. else. It also makes a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups, whether it's one-on-one -on -one tackles, whether it's one-on-one -on -one coverages. And we're going to have to be real, real good at that this week. On defense, they, they, they're a good football team, solid. Uh, beat the Apprentice School last week, 38-7. to I thought they played wonderfully on defense uh, there. But, uh, you know, we, we're going to have to be able to run the ball and throw it and, you know, try to get better each week on offense. Hopefully we'll take another step forward, uh, you know, and, and 
uh, and keep getting better each week on offense. You know, we're not hoping for a quagmire or a downpour. No. Last year, Isaac Robinson set the school single game record um, in rushing. And I'm not going to say that he can do it again this week, but obviously he's got to feel – I would hope that he would have some confidence going into this game this week. Yeah, I'd hope so. I'd, I, you know, I'd hope so that, that uh, you know, he's, he's excited about it and uh, all our other running backs also, you know, mm -hmm. because I think we, we're going to, you know, need a good running game and, and hopefully if we get Nick back and, and help get our receiver core a little more healthy, we'll be able to throw it a little bit better too. But, uh, it, like I said, it's been a work in progress. Those offensive coaches are doing a good job working with the guys, the kids – we had a good practice yesterday. I was, you know, really happy with the way we practiced and the way we came out. And, uh, you know, I told them, you know, hey, we're in this together. Mm -hmm. You know, through 11 games, we're in this together, good, good or bad. So we're gonna we're gonna stick it out together and try to do the right things, and uh, and we're gonna hang in there and, and fight for one another and care about one another. And, and the more you do that, uh, the better off uh, you'll end up being whether it's now or down the road or right. whenever the case may be, but we have to set this foundation of what, how we're going to do things on a day-to-day -day basis. And once we get that set and when some games going along with it, obviously, I, I think we'll turn the corner. Pioneers and the Brevard Tornadoes this Saturday. This Saturday is also the uh, Tusculum 5K Fund Run. If you're not a part of that, then just show up Saturday. I could give you Nick Forsberg's contact information, but you're not going to call him. So just show up Saturday yeah. and be here at 11, participate. And come, it starts and ends right here. You don't even have to run the 5K, right? We don't even have to do it. Just well, walk you, you it. You could walk it. You could walk it. Yeah. Give some money. Support the Pioneers. All the money raised goes to the Pioneer Athletic Department. So uh, come on out this Saturday. It's then you're going to watch a football game. You're going to watch Coach Odom against Coach Hamilton, Tusculum, and Brevard. Saturday, we'll kick it off at 1.30. You join us earlier, I'll badmouth you at 12.30 with our Pioneer kickoff show if you don't participate in the Pioneer 5K oh, fund run. You don't okay. get that. So be here. Many thanks to all of those part of this, the Jerry Odom Show. For Nathan Humbert, for Coach O, I'm Brian Staten. And until Saturday, go Pioneers. This has been the Jerry Odom Show. The Jerry Odom Show is brought to you in part by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1947. Sodexo. Proud food supplier of Tusculum College. By Creekside Markets. Stop in and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza today. By Premier Transportation, the official bus provider for Tusculum College Athletics. And brought to you in part by Comcast. Join us next time for more Pioneer football on the Jerry Odom Show.